Is y'all hoes gonna buy this tea or no? Nah? Listen, the shit all over social media is virtually selling itself. Everybody don't seen it one, two, ten, one hundred times. So when they find out you selling it, they gonna buy the shit just cause they interested. I'm just trying to put you up on game. Don't leave this quarantine unhealthy and or broke. Click the link in my description box. Don't get left behind. It's good money in this shit. I'm telling you. Baby, baby. This was one messy ass episode of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, baby. Sierra Faith was cracked down to her baby body. And coming up next season, them hoes don't know they're going to have a check rolling in no more. Because they down to the season finale because of Corona. Kirk said, how we supposed to live, bitch? We trying to find out too. Catch these seeds. Nessa, girl, did you get into last night's episode of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta? Girl, the episode opened up with Cheyenne and Kiyomi on that same bullshit fighting like good fellas down to the parking garage, honey. They had them ran out of budget corona, uh, budget money. I guess they had to give it to, for corona vaccine research or whatever the case may be. So they zero funded the rest of the episodes. They didn't have no location budget and the girls had to film down to the top of the parking garage with no permit. Keisha Lance Bottoms people. Keisha Lance Bottoms people. Y'all need to send their ass an infraction because I know they ain't paid no taxes on, to the city of, of Atlanta film department for filming up there down and they was all downtown by the city hall causing chaos and confusion upstairs. But I'm going to tell you one thing about it and two things for sure. Oh, I'm crunk, bitch. I had a smin off ice apple. Scrappy is a good brother. I all y'all I've been saying this for years. Y'all know I always identify with the reality TV show characters that are logical, practical. It's actual and it's factual. You know, I ain't even finna start. I'm trying to get the happy hour for the Cinco de Mayo. Around Miss Cindy House and Miss Kenny right now. Anyway, Scrap was like, what more do you need to know? He showed up to the meeting with a bitch. The same bitch he was with. No, I'm not putting my foot in the car. We is not finna go fight him and his girlfriend. Okay? That's that man girlfriend. Sis, you the other woman. And then you pulled the maximum fatal error. I'm done with him. I'm done with him. I want to fight her for running off at the mouth. Sis, you fucking that lady, man. If anything, she should be trying to Uber back up let her beat your ass. You is messing with that lady, man. Okay, you got to know how you gonna get mad and you messing with that lady man. Despite the fact that he tricked your ass into a three-way love affair, common sense should have kicked in like a turbo booster. Okay? <laughs> right, Lord. And to be honest with you, I would hate for you to get beat up in the parking lot down to the asphalt, bitch. I'm classy, baby. If you gonna beat me up, beat me up like this and not like this, honey. Beat me up in the front yard of an estate mansion or something, honey. Beat me up and, 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 and on the yacht, honey. Push me overboard in the middle of the Biscayne Bay or the Atlantic Ocean. Love overboard, love overboard. Yes, God, honey, but you was not gonna beat me up down to the cement where y'all was filming an unpermitted scene, all right? And I'm gonna tell you something, Cheyenne, you better than me because it's a whole lot of niggas out there that I would not get beat, that I, I am gonna get beat up for, and school the ass would not be one of them. But nevertheless, we gonna move the air right on. I wanna know why it is when the girls left the trip. I get why Bambi left, and she didn't wanna ride on the bus. Better catch a cab, get on the bus. I ain't got no time talking all that fuss. That's Destiny's Child. That's the early Destiny's Child. At any rate, I understand why Bambi left. She's seasick and nauseated and everything in between. She don't want to deal with them bickering assholes. But Shekinah and the people, Shekinah and the people. I don't understand why Shekinah didn't ride the bus. The people say Shekinah ain't even got no car. Uh, so did she leave with production? And I know she didn't have to go home early to do hair. Because the people say Shekinah don't even do hair no more. So I'm trying to understand why Shekinah couldn't ride on the bus with the rest of them. And Shekinah know good and goddamn well all that wagon she dragging. That little bitty ass suitcase she had. A.K.A. that little pink um, Lisa Frank lunchbox she had. That fit them damn um, king size duvet covers she called clothes. I ain't with the bullshit. Y'all gonna have to come a little harder with that. If you gonna try to convince me that that shit was legit. Um, Alright, so now let's talk about Rashida and Kirk, right? I'm gonna tell y'all something. I have a small issue 
with what's going on with Rashida and Kirk. I don't necessarily like this narrative of oh, automatically you a black man, you gonna get in trouble. You know, they trumped up these charges, this, that, and the third. Cause I'm sitting here looking at this shit like, why are you riding around with weed in your pocket? And, and they said he had a sawed off shotgun or whatever. He didn't have a sawed off shotgun. I can't remember or not if he had a small handgun or not. But it's just certain things in my opinion that I feel like you should not be riding around in your car with. Um, I get that celebrities carry guns, right? But to be honest with you, Young Kirk is not that damn pop and popular where anybody's recognizing his ass, trying to rob him. And the weed thing, I mean, listen, what, <laughs> back in the day when I was young, I don't do drugs anymore. I used to have my man drop the shit off to me. Okay, me and my people used to buy enough so he would get up out the house and bring it to us so we didn't have to ride around and get it. There's just certain things that us as black men can do to prevent us from going to jail. Me nor anybody I roll with have that fear of being pulled over and they're going to find something in our car. Because, bitch, it ain't even nothing in there. I get drunk, I leave my containers at the restaurant, at the bar. When I, <laughs> I leave all my paraphernalia and stuff home. So I say that to say this. Y'all don't make it easy. And I think that's the point Rashida and Kirk were trying to make. Don't make it easy for people to give you some trumped up ass charges. Leave paraphernalia, don't have no little roach, don't have no raw papers, don't have no Philly blunt, don't have none of that in your damn car. And if you do, tie that shit up in a goddamn garbage bag and put it under the wheel well. Nevertheless, they gonna get the nigga out of jail or whatever, and that was cute. Um, Bambi has an announcement for her baby. She goes to medieval times. Now, I don't even know where in Atlanta they got all that castle and shit. Maybe that's where Mama D stayed. She always talking about kingdoms and castles and princess and princesses and people trying to come in her palace. Uh, maybe they repossessed her palace or, or uh, what they call it, foreclosed on her palace. That's why all the white folks was in there eating pizza. Nevertheless, not to be confused with eating pussy, but eating pizza. Nevertheless, that was really cute how Bambi announced to Scrappy that they were having another baby and we liked it. And I'm glad to see Imani is kind of in the in the fold and she's filming more with Scrappy and Bam and the new young baby who name I don't know. Um, Sierra and Tiffany Fox. Is it me? Or Tiffany Fox look real mature by the face? Like Tiffany Fox, no tea, no shade. You look like you used to roll with Vivica Fox and Tisha Campbell them back in the day. Like, girl, you look like you was on the set of House Party. <laughs> Ain't gonna hurt nobody. Get on down. Ain't gonna hurt nobody. Let me find out you was the choreographer for Tiffany Fox. Because you, you look like you and Vivica Fox got some hangout stories from 93, girl, while the rest of us was in elementary. Nevertheless, she was in there. Um, talking all that shit with Sierra about BK or whatever the case may be. Then BK came in there with the key. Sierra talking about, why are you breaking in my house? You get out of my house. And BK couldn't have stopped from laughing. I'm sure both of y'all looked on the call sheet and saw that y'all two was filming that day. The shit felt so fake. And then he was like, get out of here, sis. Let's turn up. And then you throwing dollars on Tiffany wide lower back. And Lord, she was rolling it at the pace of an elderly person. I was just like, no, no, man. And then the tramp stamp solidified the fact that you was an old hoe from the 90s. I was like, Tiffany Fox looked like she been here before. <laughs> In the 90s, bitch. Let me find out Tiffany Fox gonna went back to the future. Yes, God, honey. Moving right along. Kendra and her spa day. The only thing that needed to be relaxed in that spa was Young Jug Mama Wig, okay? That wig was motherfucking atrocious. Young Jock, you made way too much money for your mama wig to be looking like a rusty helmet, okay? While you was right there getting your pompadour permed and crimped and laid, don't you own a whole salon? Like, let the quiet as it's kept. Your mama need to walk in that sun and in lieu of mopping the floor with that damn wig, um, your business partner need to give her a new hairdo. That shit was atrocious. Your mama looked like a burnt black and mild tip with that damn wig on. They had the nerve to have a turtleneck on with it with a deep ass voice talking about, I don't like that old heifer over there. But bitch, we don't like that old heifer over where? Which heifer? That heifer sitting on top of your head. Bitch, you need to burn that shit, bitch. Burn it, honey. Look at a goddamn mess. Can Sierra. While you was over there putting makeup ass on Mimi, you need to be putting some hair dye on that damn wig. And here's my thing. You can't, you can't 
act ugly and be ugly. And it, 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 you you gonna have to pick a struggle. And I want you to be able to read. I just don't want people to be able to read you in return. And the fact that you was on there looking like a recovering crackhead, look like you know, girl, you look like you used to roll with Frankie Lyons, Keisha Keisha Cole, mama. The fact that you look like her, you and her was best friends and been around the world and I, yeah, yeah, it invalidated any read you had of Carly Red. Carly Red looks look like, ooh, girl, they look bad, honey. They look, I mean, they look, they look like, ooh, like, like dead body bad. Like, ooh, how long this body been in here? But quiet as it's kept. Your wig look like mangy dog. You know how when they run a dog over on the highway and they sit there just looking real child child based, real wild wild like it was just real Brillo esque. You know what I'm saying? I know Corona going on and we out of cleaning supplies and maybe you was just trying to walk around and give back to the people. Is your house nasty? Is you in need? Cut a lock of this hair and clean up your house. You know what I'm saying? That that's what it was giving me, or whatever the case may be. But you know what? Uh, somebody like it. It's a market for everything. And quiet as it's kept since the strip clubs is closed and shit. Crackhead pussy is on the rise. So I'm sure you gonna walk down the street and somebody gonna say, Hey, Slim Goody. Goldie. Goldie Lock. Who me? Yeah, you mama. Uh, how much for a little fun? Listen, work ain't honest, but it pays the bills. And I know y'all sitting there laughing and choking right now, and I could go in on this boy mama for another 20 minutes, but you know what? It's Cinco de Mayo, and I want a little bit of margarita in between my legs and in my butt. So what I'm going to do is stop right here and move the fuck on so I can get the fuck up off the line. Because I got two more mamas I need to go in and let have on. And the next one is Kendra mama while we at it. Fuck these notes. Kendra, your mama, you know, ooh, child. She, she's sitting, what the, listen. The lady don't seen the show. The lady don't seen Jock Mama. So she ought to know what the fuck kind of fuck me was about to come along, come around with what the fuck y'all had going on. Then you don't took this overly religious lady down here to the trans uh, lips place. And she's sitting up there with a fucking attitude looking like she's smelling shit. If she was so sanctified and full of the Holy Spirit, she should have sat her ass in a goddamn car, yet alone stay home. See, I don't like no lady like that. No lady like that. You want to go and be supportive, but you don't even know how to fake the fuck. Y'all was there for an hour or two. You couldn't put a smile on your face for an hour or two? What did you want? The Miss Charlene edition of the drag show? Did you want them to say, we shall overcome or his eyes on the sparrow? Or trouble don't last always. I'm trying to understand what is it that you would have needed to have make you feel better in a drinking establishment. And don't even get me started with, I think you was feeling that way because them people was trans. I ain't even going to do you in like that. I'm just going to say because you was in a bar in a drinking establishment and you saved, sanctified and full of the deacon dick that you couldn't uh, appreciate it for what it was. It was a good old time. You take your ass down to the Tyler Perry Medea shows and you laugh and you clap and he be in there with them men's with them shirts off, them gay man said he fucking and you're sitting there and you clap for that well what's wrong with that man in the dress and them men's in the dress okay they just as sexy and provocative as some Tyler Perry plays with them fine ass men that can't act and you go up for that and get your sanctified coochie all wet gotta cool it off and rinse it off with the holy water and bless oil and all that to get it wet cause you know it's all old and dusky like cause it ain't been touched since Jesus parted the seas yet alone parted your damn legs but you got the nerve to sit up in there all unsanctified and all feeling like you're going to hell and all judgment are like get your ass out of there go on we don't need you what would Jesus do if anything if you were saved as you said you was and you felt the way you'd have ministered to the people you'd have got on the microphone and you'd have ministered to the people started with young job mama wig then you would have told the people about how to reach out and touch their neighbor and be there for their neighbor because all them beautiful drag queens was in there and nobody gave young job mama a Jimmy Jones makeover and I'm mad Nicole Love Dupree was in there on the stage she should have reached out and touched young job mama dressed her up and that would have been the real gag had they dressed her up and then let her came out and said, meet me at the club. It's going down at the hair salon. It's going down. I'm not drinking no more smell of ice out before I get on this camera. Because, bitch, I'm crunk. We got crunk, we got drunk, and now we want to fight. That's the rest of development. Woo! Shit now. Goddamn. The people going to think I'm on some. Fuck y'all. I'm just feeling good. I feel good all over. I hit my note, bitch. Ha <laughs> ha. I got some for y'all hoes. Moving right along. The spirit done shot up in my bones. Like Rance Allen, baby. Something about the name Jesus. Woo! It is the sweetest. I know. Speaking of 
mamas. Mama D brought her frowsy ass around Scrappy and Bambi rent a house. That Airbnb. Uh -uh. Y'all notice every time Scrappy and Bambi film at their house, it's a new set of furniture, a different room, a different camera angle. We ain't never seen a different tchotchke up on the wall. Girl, them ain't y'all houses. Them ain't y'all houses. Y'all don't look down to Airbnb, and I hope y'all paid them Airbnb host the extra fee for uh, filming in their house. And I'm uh, bringing that boodoo in there. Nevertheless, Mama D showed down to the people house with her frowsy ass got a damn attitude because she heard about the baby and baby being pregnant down to the social media. Now, here's the thing. Y'all know I love me some devil. Mama D, you got to know that them people ain't told you shit and you can't come around their house because you keep up too much shit with that girl mama. And then when you came in... <laughs> Mama D came in there and just straight got it started. And CC, since you want to open your damn mouth, let me go ahead and give you an apology because I shouldn't have gave you a human eulogy funeral. I should have, because since you walk on all fours, I should have buried you to the pet cemetery. Yes, God, bitch, I am all for the clever read. Mama D is one of the most intellectual, clever reading people I know on this planet. But don't you worry about it, because Cece said, bitch, I'm not with your shit this time. You might have buried me, bitch, but I'm going I'm to kill your ass and have you still walking on earth. She went down to the witch doctor and got her a piece of voodoo doll. Yes, God, honey, she called Iyana Van Zandt, and she has sent her a care package. Voodoo priestess Van Zandt. Sent her a care package with the damn voodoo pins and then she said, Mama D, your ass gonna have rheumatoid arthritis come tomorrow morning. Fuck around with me, bitch. How them knees doing, ho? Your ass gonna be walking with a limp. Why you talking all that shit? Why you talking all that shit? Your ass gonna be walking with a limp. That shit was hilarious. But what I do respect is Scrappy and Bambi taking Mama D down to their rental basement. And Mama D did apologize to Bambi. And I like the way that Scrappy broke that shit down to Mama D saying, listen, she already lost one parent. And to see another parent on an obituary, like, that's a lot. And that is a lot, Mama D. You did take it too far. And hopefully, you know, that they can get it together. Like Mama D and CC both said, or Mama D said, the frying pan is hot. They got to wait till it cool down. But I'm just going to need a better understanding of what the true problem is anyway. Like... It seemed like y'all fighting just to be fighting at this point. Uh, well, Mama D said the lady hit her. I mean, Mama D, pop her ass back. And then when that make y'all even, that's how we did it back in the day. All right, y'all fighting. After y'all fight, this shit be over. Just pop her ass real quick. Um, so then Sierra get to Paris party. Okay, like, I got to be real careful with this critique because the words of the streets is that we're not supposed to talk about children, right? So I won't talk about children, but I will say this. There is something very off-putting about Sierra's daughter's attitude and her energy. And I'm going to leave it at that because I don't want to talk about nobody's children. I can see how other people who don't know her could have issue with her. Sierra didn't buy a 15 year old a car and child. I was like, you know what? These, these, she's, Paris showed me part of my problem with this new generation. They're never present. Here it is, your mama and, and daddy got you a $50,000 vehicle outside and you too busy on the live with these long nails on the damn live can't even be present in the moment. More concerned about the damn live than the fact that you got a damn vehicle out here. It, it, you know, I, I can't get mad with them. They're just the product of their generation. But I would just wish that our teenagers could be more present. Like, everything is not about a like, a follow, a snap. And this fucking TikTok wears me the fuck out. Stop asking me. I'm not getting on no goddamn TikTok, bitch. I'm almost 40. TikTok these nuts. What I look like. No, ma'am, honey. I reads. Okay, I'm grown. I sit back. I drink my liquor, and I and I fuck people's husband. That's what grown people do. Okay, that's what grown people do. Not them the type of games I play. I play games with my neighbor husband and his ass. I don't play TikTok games. I don't want to be uh, playing around with middle school kids talking about. Okay, plus I ain't got enough family members around me to get in no Soul Train line doing that corny ass shit anyway. Nevertheless, BK shows up and crack Sierra face or what's left of it. Baby. Sierra. 
you ought to be glad next week is the season finale and y'all probably not going to have a reunion and if you do a virtual one, because you got a lot of explaining to do, sis. You had to bitch them all and complain them all and every damn thing else in between about BK and quiet as a scared, baby, look like you was doing the same thing. That man had to went through your phone and you was like, I miss you. Pull up. Turn out. And then you got on your confession and said, I might have talked to somebody one, two, three, four times or whatever the case may be. Sis. Grub. I mean, Shooter taught you how to be. <laughs> Shooter don't taught your ass how to be Cheyenne and Kiyomi. Uh, this is real interesting. Like, and then you got real mad with it. Now, the only thing that BK did wrong was showed up to that girl baby body. And you showed up alone. Because Scooter could have came out there and scooted your ass. Shooter could have came out there. I'm going to call him Shooter this time. Shooter could have came out there and shooted your ass. Okay, and then you just don't do that in front of kids and all that care and all that girl high school friends and stuff there And that she all embarrassed to the school cuz her mama looking like a hoe See when I was coming up it was your mama on crap rock whoop whoop Last your mama on that dick rock whoop whoop Your mama got that dick rock whoop whoop All out in front of the school you don't make this girl mama look like a hoe All out in front of the girl skating ring body that's just unacceptable for the children. And I know the children is grown, but they don't need to be that damn grown. And speaking of grown, I hope y'all made some grown woman and grown man decisions with y'all love and hip hop check. Because I was sitting on my sofa minding my business as the credits was rolling. And that bitch said, next week on the season finale of Love and Hip Hop and I'm like, wait a minute, bitch. I know I just started reviewing this shit. I know we, we only a couple episodes in. And it took me off guard. When Mama D had mentioned Corona, because I thought they had more episodes filmed and in the can than to be talking about Corona, which we started talking about locking down and people in the schools having it about six weeks ago. So, six, seven weeks ago, maybe, I thought they had more than that in the can. Nonetheless, them all was going to shut down production. It, it looked like everybody scrambling and mad, and it looked like Kirk said, How are we going to live? Now, granted, no production, he could have been saying that about something else, and they making it seem like he worried about his money. But bitch, that's real talk. We know a lot of y'all hoes borrowing from Peter to pay Paul and <clears throat> living check to check. And that contract said we're going to have 20 episodes and bitch, they don't cut y'all ass off at six or seven. And y'all don't spend that, spunt that money before y'all got it. Rick, um, Chaz, um, Red and Center going to be knocking on a whole lot of people's door. And they asked for six references. I hope y'all didn't put my ass down, put Candy damn number down, and put Todd ass and Apollo and Peter. I hope y'all didn't put my number down because I'm going to tell they ass where to come find this shit. It's that Frost Bistro. They got a whole kitchen in the bike or whatever. And make sure they didn't leverage and put that shit up for collateral when they bail Young Kurt. Out of jail. Love and hip hop people. You finna see a lot of hoes applying for a stimulus check. Talking about they out of work. Work ain't honest, but it pays the bills. Uh, Cheyenne, you might want to get back with, with school if you got a little coin. And Sierra, I mean, bitch, you might have to toggle between BK, Scooter, and whoever else was in them text messages. Because work ain't honest, but it pays the bills. Or better yet, bitch, y'all better press the link in the description box and sell some of this IS so 10 this motherfucking neutral burst is blowing off the shelves, bitch. Blowing up bank accounts and the company pay daily for those of y'all who need a little cha-cha-cha every day and they also pay weekly. Don't mess up, bitch. Don't think because you're on TV, you a buzz selling tea, bitch. Work ain't honest, but it pays the bills. Join my team, a bump, bump, a bump, bump. And it gave me the life that I came to live. I'm finna get up off the line and go get me something to drink for Cinco de Mayo. I'll call y'all hoes later. Bye.